Hi, Jay Carper from American Torah again. Today I'm reading Proverbs 30, verses 24 through 31. A little bit longer passage. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a feeble folk, yet they make their homes in the crags. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps it with its hands, and it is in king's palaces. There are three things which are majestic in pace. Yes, four which are stately in walk. A lion which is mighty among beasts and does not turn away from any. A greyhound, a male goat also, and a king's whose troops are with him. There's quite a bit of contrast in all of these different creatures and in the king. The first set are all very small. They are humble, small creatures. Some people say repulsive. They're not, they're not pretty to look on. They're all unclean. Uh, well, most of them are. The locusts aren't. But the ants, among the tiniest of God's creatures, yet they build cities, essentially. Uh, they dig tunnels. They, they work in concert. They, they gather food. They can lift many times their weight. The rock badgers, not exactly sure what the real word there is. I don't think the translators are sure either. But they are small little creatures that hide. And yet they build their, their homes among rocky hillsides. They, are, they build fortresses. Uh, they, they dig tunnels down into the earth where they build their homes. They are able to defend themselves with what little the God has given them. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in rank. The locusts are, again, tiny little creatures, but they act in great hordes. And even though a single locust by itself could never hope to do damage to a person, a swarm of locusts can destroy a nation. They can starve people to death and kill millions. The spider skillfully grasps with its hands and it lives in king's palaces. The spider is, to most people, one of the most repulsive things that God has created. Personally, I can't stand them. Um, but they're also fascinating because of what they do. The, the amazing variety of the spiders that are out there in the fantastic homes that they build. Uh, a spider's web can be a beautiful thing and a mysterious thing. The way that the spider, with no mind to speak of, can build elaborate patterns, can tell the difference between different kinds of silk and mix chemicals to create different effects. They can communicate with each other, with other animals. They can sense prey versus danger. And then we move into the next things. Three things which are majestic in pace, four which are stately in walk. The lion, the greyhound, the male goat, and the king. All of these things have something in common too. You know, the first set are all small, humble creatures that find a way to compensate for their weaknesses. The ant works together to build things, to, to create civilizations, or at least analogs of civilization. The, the rock badger, or whatever this animal is, it uses its, its claws and its paws to build a home that rivals the security of a fortress. In the locust, like the ant, it makes up for its lack of strength in numbers. The spider, although it is extremely fragile, it builds the most amazing structures. But these other four, these are of a different kind altogether. These things are proud, they're strong, and the thing which ties them all together is that they are all the best in what they do. You know, the small creatures make up for their, for their weakness by working together or by using the things around them. But the lion is the king of beasts. There are very few things that can stand up to a lion and he walks proudly, and if you've ever seen a, a lion charging, 
there's something primally terrifying about a lion charging directly at you, even if it's just on camera. The greyhound, the fastest of all the dogs. Uh, greyhounds have an ancient history. The ancient Egyptians painted pictures of them, of, uh, or at least dogs that look like them. Um, they were fast in, well, they're just like the, the lion. They're the best at what they do. The male goat, like the rock, there's this uh, rock badger, it builds homes in the, in the, you know, the rocky hillsides. But the goat, it climbs all over them. There's nothing that can get in its way. They, if you've ever seen uh, mountain goats, they, it's like, it's a game to them to move into the most absurd locations. Like, why is that animal up there? Well, because it can. Why shouldn't it? And finally, the king whose troops are with him. This isn't just a tyrant. This is a king whose troops love him and respect him. They are with him in the heat of battle. They are on his side. He is the best at what he does, and everybody knows it. These are things to aspire to. Whether you are weak or whether you are strong, you can compensate for your weaknesses through community, through working together with other people. It's one of the reasons that God, all of God's law assumes that you are living in community with other people. It's impossible to live according to God's instructions by yourself. There are no lone wolves, really, in, in God's economy. We all have weaknesses, but we can all compensate for them by working together, by taking advantage of our strengths. We can metaphorically dig our homes into the hillside. Um, we are weak on the outside, but we can surround ourselves with strong things because God has made us that way. And also, we all have strengths, and we will all live our best lives if we are able to discover what our strengths are, to know who we are, and to focus on those things. Uh, there is a, uh, a truism among self-help gurus that self-improvement isn't found in finding all of your weaknesses and making them better. Self-improvement, real self-improvement comes finding what you're best at, focusing on that. Play off your strengths. Compensate for your weaknesses, especially with the cooperation of other believers with your neighbors and family. That's the way we were meant to live. This is Jake Harper from American Torah. Be blessed.